Cynthia, you ran away from home. At what age? On oh, the first time, six. The world was calling at a young age. Yeah, yeah. But when did you finally really run away from home? I was in my mid-teens. Mid-teens, mm -hmm. and you're running away to New York. Mm-hmm. I'd like to hear what that experience is like of turning your back on your home and getting on a bus or hitchhiking and never going back. Well, at 12 years old, you don't find the world. The world finds you. You are not the predator, you are the prey. And, um, I, don't, I mean, yes, I take responsibility for my actions. I don't blame this person or blame that person. It's, it's my head, I was the one that did it. I reacted the way I did in the circumstances that I was subjected to. But there's a whole lingo that, that none of you would even <laughs> understand what I was talking about if I tried to explain to you how, how a girl gets, gets caught basically by a pimp and turned out into the streets. It's, it's not her choice most of the time. Um, Through this horror of an existence, <laughs> you were able to find solace in poetry. Poetry was survival to me. You know, and it, that's little chunks of my soul that like, and like that I gripped onto. That was my prayer. And, and it's, you know, it was my therapist, it was my lover, it was my friend. That, that was, you know, and I didn't pursue it because I didn't want to give it to somebody else. That's mine. Just like I never orgasmed with a customer. That belongs to me. My poetry was the same thing. When, when I'm ready to give it to somebody, I will give it to them and let them have it. Here, here's a piece of me. You can have this. I trust you with it. Okay, will you give us, Cynthia Geller, some of you? Sure, I mean, yeah, it, it's, as long as it comes from me, yeah, okay. So, we would like to hear uh -huh. Cynthia's poetry. Uh -huh. Nights of acid and peyote, where friends develop knowing eyes of desert coyote and beached whales. They said I'd become the devil incarnate, alive here on earth, to wallow on the floor in the dirt. I take off my head and empty it again and put in different stuff. Too much is never enough. Drugs don't make me blind. I'm too far gone inside my mind. I sit, rocking back and forth, looking for a way out of my mind or some memory that wants to be kind. I'll have another cigarette, another glass of wine. Just a diversion, not any kind of escape from my brain. Life would be easier if I were more insane. I want to crawl into a ball in a hole and have my head leave me alone. Unrequited love is simply God's way of saying, imagine how I feel. Electric. We no longer reduce or shrink human heads because of the civil and, and social uh, laws have prohibited. What we are doing now is shrinking ignorance. Enlarging heads. <laughs> and enlarging heads. Muy bien. Y también alargando las cabezas. We are here not as tourists. We are messengers. We come here with a message of the Amazon rainforest in Ecuador. We believe that we as indigenous, if we don't get up and defend our jungle, our days will be counted. It's not fair, especially petroleum oil, and they take everything, then they don't leave one cent for the indigenous people, they just leave destruction. They don't just uh, 
extract the minerals from their Amazon jungle, but they also um, ruin the habitat where they live and therefore ruin the whole jungle, their way of living and, and our Mother Earth. Humanity or the developed countries uh, need to be conscious of this and get involved in saving our Mother Earth, otherwise we are killing ourselves. Electric coffee.